So taking inventory of what we know at this point, we know that the velocity at the top, again, we called that V subscript T, was 1.50 meters per second. We just solved VB, 26.2 meters per second. As it gains height on the way up, that kinetic energy wedge is going to start to get smaller because a gravitational potential energy wedge is going to be increasing. If we wanted to analyze the speed of the cart as it goes through the loop at a height of 23 meters, we can do that. Let's again represent the energy breakdown with an energy pie chart. The gravitational potential energy present at the top of the loop is going to be less than it was at the top of the hill, but it still will be a sizable part of the pie chart. Let's break it down something like this, knowing that it's not going to be perfect. Maybe we represent the kinetic energy wedge like this. The rest of the energy total comes from gravitational potential energy. And because we know energy is conserved, the total energy in each of these pies is the same. We had already set up how we would represent the total energy at the top of the hill. So just to get another example in, let's look at how you might set this up if you didn't know anything about what was going on at the top of the hill. We could say that the energy total at the bottom equals the energy total in the top of the loop. I'll just call that E subscript loop. At the bottom of the hill, again, we only had kinetic energy, and the formula for kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. I could put subscript b on there to just say that this is the speed at the bottom of the hill. At the top of the loop, there is a split of energy. There's some kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. This is going to be a different velocity, so let's call it v subscript l for loop plus the gravitational potential energy that it gained when it went up into the loop. The formula for gravitational potential energy, of course, is mgh. Again, at this point, we could plug in numbers for the known quantities. We know the mass of the roller coaster, and again, we can cancel that term because it shows up in every term in the equation on both sides of the equation. We know that the speed at the bottom of the hill is 26.2 meters per second. We don't know the speed at the top of the loop. That's V subscript L. That's what we're solving for. And again, we do know the value of G, and we do know the value of H. Sometimes there's a question of whether to plug in G as a negative value in an energy problem. That's incorrect, because energy is a scalar quantity. It does not have a direction. We use negative 9.8 in problems where we want to denote that the acceleration due to gravity is a downward 9.8 meters per second. So be careful, that's always just going to be plugged in as a positive value. Before I do the algebra to solve for the problem, I'll go ahead and put a subscript L on this height. I want to solve for the velocity at the top of the loop. So my first step is to subtract g times the height of the loop from both sides of the equation. That makes this term subtract to 0. Then I need to multiply through by 2. And again, I want to multiply the entire quantity here by 2. That cancels out the 1 half fraction. And then I need to finally take a square root to solve for the speed. Plugging in my known values, I get the following. This was the velocity at the bottom of the hill. Remember, that term is squared. And I subtract the value of g, 9.80 meters per second squared, times the height. Remember, that came from the loop side of the equation. That's the height of the loop, 23 meters. And all of that, when calculated, should equal the velocity at the top of the loop, vL. Again, make note that if we track the units on each of the terms, we do end up with meters squared per second squared in this term. We're going to have meters squared per second squared in this term. And when we take the square root, that's going to boil down to meters per second, just as we would expect. If you plug your numbers in correctly and calculate, you should find that the speed at the top of the loop is 15.4 meters per second. That should make sense. It was going 26.2 meters per second here. As it goes uphill, it's going to slow down. So the velocity at the top of the loop will be less. 
Hopefully those problems demonstrate how you can use the concept of conservation of energy to solve problems that would be very difficult or even impossible using a force diagram approach. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.